2011 Scottish Amateur Championship was played at Western Gales on the Ayrshire coast. 256 of the best amateur golfers in the country all out to try and win the national title. At the upper end of the amateur game there is an increasingly professional approach and this was reflected when four of the leading contenders for the week were on hand to help launch a new sponsorship initiative between the Scottish Golf Union and Highland Spring. We are the title sponsor of the Highland Spring Junior Masters. We are supporting golf at a grassroots level now and we will also be supplying water to all of the Scottish Golf Union events, all 15 of the events throughout the season. And it's really to inspire youngsters. Highland Spring is you know, committed to forging the link between active sport, good hydration, and it really gives us a chance for kids to pick up, pick up a club and get involved. Michael Stewart had had a fantastic season so far, with a big win in South Africa and very nearly claiming the British amateur title just a few weeks ago. Played, well obviously I played really nice in South Africa, I managed to win the South African match play which was, which was nice, it was probably the, the biggest event we played in. Uh, that and the stroke play, David got beaten in the stroke play so it was, it was a great turnout from the boys over there. Since then I've obviously struggled a little bit with uh, being injured, I've missed maybe four or five quite big events but I managed to put it aside for the week at the British and, and played really well down there. Obviously a bit disappointed to not close out with a win but it was a great experience and I'll take a lot from it. It wasn't to be Michael's week, he was unable to defend his title. He got through the first two rounds okay but then came up against this man here, Bobby Rushford, to whom he lost 4-3. And Rushford had a good run and made it through to the quarter-finals before losing out to James Ross. David Law, the champion from two years ago, had also had a very successful time in South Africa. Proving there's more to his game than just match play, Law narrowly missed out on winning the stroke play championship in South Africa, losing in a playoff. He did manage to pick up the Northern Open title though, however by his own high standards the rest of the season has not been great. So what could he hope for coming into this week? I mean, you're obviously hoping to win. I'm playing, playing pretty good. I played, played nice enough out in Portugal and it was nice to kind of get two weeks off to, to work hard with my coach, Neil Maher, and, uh, you know, work on a couple of things I was maybe struggling with. So it's, I'm feeling refreshed coming into this week and looking forward to it. Lowe would certainly be looking for a good performance this week to get himself back in the reckoning for the Walker Cup, but also to try and match some of the performances from his Scotland teammates this season, as they all look to keep improving both individually and as a team. I think out of all the, the national teams, we've probably got the best sort of team spirit and uh, continuity anyway. But, uh, you know, this week we're out here by ourselves trying to beat each other. Uh, but the home international should be, should be a good week and I think we stand a good chance. James Byrne, another one of the favourites this week, had returned to Scotland after completing his golf scholarship in America. The man who made the final of the British Amateur Championship last year and lost out in the semis of this tournament last year to Jordan Finlay despite being four under par tells us what it means to him to be part of the Scotland setup. It's good, I mean I get on with, with all the guys great here. Uh, not that I didn't get on with the Americans but uh, it's a slightly different team environment I think with, with the Scots. Uh, we're very passionate about golf and, and uh, you know about, about our, t our country so uh, from that respect, you know, I love playing for Scotland and putting on the, putting on the shirt, and uh, I tend to play better in the in the team events when I'm when I'm playing for my country. I think. And is this going to be his last attempt at winning this title before turning pro? Uh, it might be. Uh, I haven't totally decided yet, but uh, it looks like I'm going to move towards the pro ranks at the end of the year. Um, I'm certainly going to go to Q school, and then whether I turn before or after, I've not quite decided. Um, but uh, I'm going in with the mindset that yeah, it's probably going to be my last chance. And with James Byrne thinking about moving on to the pro ranks, what about the youngsters looking to fill his place? Well, beaten finalist in the Scottish boys this year, Liam Johnson. He had a great run in this tournament last year. And again, things were looking good early on. Sinking a magnificent putt here on the tricky par 3 7th during his first round victory over Glenn Fotheringham. However, Liam's challenge ended in the third round when he lost to Kilmacombe's Matt Clark. Another youngster who's broken through into the Scotland team, Scott Gibson. He had a great run in Ayrshire two years ago when the championship was down at Royal Troon. His opponent in the fourth round was a man who plays his golf at Royal Troon. Michael Smith had reached the quarter-finals last year and the year before that had beaten James Byrne. 
in the opening round at his home course. Scott Gibson won out in the end in this tie, before losing in the last 16 to Neil Henderson. A young man still in the junior ranks, Eamon Bradley, showed some real class in his fourth round tie, holding this magnificent putt against Scott Brown to force the match down to the first hole of extra play. The match eventually went on to the fifth extra hole, where Scott Brown eventually sealed victory. A slightly more senior figure, Brian Souter from Leven, who won this year's Champion of Champions, was really up against it in the fourth round against Scott Borrowman. He had to hold this putt on the 17th to keep the match going, but again had to hold a putt on the 18th, this for birdie, to take the match into extra time. After a magnificent approach shot from the middle of the fairway, unfortunately the putt just didn't drop, and the week was over for Brian, as Scott Borrowman made it through to the next round. Scott's reward was a tie against Brian's fellow Pfeiffer and leader of the Order of Merit this year, James White. In the end, James proved just too strong for Scott, and it was the man from London Lynx who progressed into the last eight. White has had a fantastic year in getting himself to the top of the Order of Merit, and he too relished the chance to work in his game over the winter. My golf personally was, wasn't great in South Africa, but I think a lot of the work we did out there uh, has allowed me to play well this season. I think I've reaped the rewards since we got back. I played really steady all year and I think that's the result of the hard work we did out there. I'm currently at the top of the order of merit at the moment. Uh, I'm just looking to hopefully have a good week here. This is the last really big event to see this and Marriott Sweden after this for the European individual. Those are the two big events I'll be targeting. Um, and yeah, hopefully just continue the form that I've showed so far. Waiting for James in the quarterfinals would be the winner of this tie from the last 16. Scott Brown versus James Byrne. Scott Brown, the man who had to play five extra holes in the morning to beat Eamon Bradley, just ran out of steam and James Byrne was victorious, making it through to the quarters against White where he was again victorious, bringing him through to the semi-finals where he was to play this young man. Daniel Kay from Dunbar had sneaked up outside the radar of most of those watching the tournament, but his play had been immaculate and was again when he won in the 19th hole to beat James Byrne and make it into the final. In the other half of the draw, Graham Robertson had been making steady progress. He too was having a fantastic year, recognised with his recent call-up into the Scotland team. He'd made it through to the last 16 where he lost to David Law. Next up for Law was this man, Neil Henderson. He had beaten Scott Gibson in the last 16, but Law eventually won on the 18th two holes up, and again David Law beat James Ross in the semi-final, getting him into the final, his second in three years. And over the last three years in this tournament, Law had won 19 out of his 20 ties, but Daniel Kay wasn't to be intimidated, here ruling in a great birdie putt on the first to go one up straight away. And he must have been feeling good about things, as the players made their way up the second, Law had pulled his approach off to the left and chipped on through the green, but held his nerve and showed his class by rolling in that putt for a par which was good enough for a half, with Daniel Kay missing his birdie putt. And by the time the players and the spectators made their way onto the third, Law was beginning to look as if he'd warmed up a little. This his approach to the par four. And he rolled in that short three foot putt for a birdie to square the match. By the time we'd made it down to the fifth, Daniel Kay needed this putt to keep the match all square. And for the first time he was behind although you have to wonder just how that ball didn't drop. Conditions were magnificent for the final, and both players were really rising to the occasion. Daniel Kay had birdied the sixth, but still lost a hole to Law's Eagle, and needed to roll this in for a half on the seventh. He was two down, but playing well. However, he was up against a quality opponent, whose golf had been magnificent all week. With a rare bad shot, Cade played his approach at the 8th into the water, meaning that Law had the luxury of two putts from here to win the hole and move to 3 up. And not only was he 3 up at the turn, he was also 4 under par. 
but Daniel Kay had beaten Walker Cup squad members Chris Nicol and James Byrne on his way to this final and wasn't going to give in easily. Here rolling in a putt on the 10th for a birdie and to bring the deficit back to two. However, by the time the players had reached the par 3 15th, Law was again three ahead and still hadn't dropped a shot. Here getting up and down from the greenside bunker for a half. On the 17th, Kay needed that putt for a par to half the hole, but missed and he was now four down. And that's how it stood at the halfway stage. Back out in the afternoon, by the time they reached the 6th, Law was now five ahead. This was Kay's third shot at the par five, and he knew with holes running out that he had to start sinking some putts. This was Law's reply, not quite as close as Kay, but both men sank their putts for birdie fours and the holes halved. Back onto the par 3 7th, the 25th hole of the day, and David Law's form was relentless. His tee shot here rolling up, pin high, three feet from the hole. He sank the putt for his sixth birdie of the day to go along with his eagle and as the crowds moved on to the eighth, Law was now six up. Winning the final in Troon two years ago, Law had relied on a remarkable short game that day. However, this time around, not only was his driving long and straight, but his approach play set up birdie chance after birdie chance. Again, holding that short putt on the tenth to go seven up. Meaning that Kay had to win the twelfth to keep the match going. This his putt for a birdie. And wouldn't you know it, a magnificent effort, very much appreciated by the crowd and good enough to take the game down onto the 13th, the par 3. Kay had knocked his tee shot to the front of the green, but needing to win every hole could only stand and watch as David Law hit another iron to within three feet. And when the players reached the green, the match was conceded. We caught up with David to ask how it feels to win his second national title in three years. It feels brilliant. Uh, I think this one's more special to me than, than the first one anyway. And no doubt a fan of the Ayrshire coast and this course. The course is fantastic. The greens are just unbelievable and uh, the whole course itself is just in fantastic condition. You know, the members give up the course for a whole week and it's not an easy thing to do. And uh, it's something that's much appreciated by all the players for sure. A sentiment echoed by his opponent today. Loved it, absolutely loved it. Greens are just awesome, absolutely awesome. You know, we, just a pleasure to put on greens as good as that. And course in general is just very, very good. Disappointment today for Kay, but a fantastic week with a couple of notable victories along the way. For me, it was big, big to be, uh, you know, James Byrne. You know, I don't want to stop here. I want to build on it and take all the positives out of it and go on and hopefully have a good end to the season and then take it from there. Key had won himself a lot of new fans during the week and both players enjoyed good encouragement during the final and among those taking a keen interest were some of David Law's international teammates. You know I've been getting texts from everyone this week and uh, Paul Shields was down watching today so was Stephen McEwen and uh, you know it's nice for everyone to sort of support each other and be happy for each other when when we're all winning and I think we'll definitely have a good home at Nationals. And a certain major winner had also been in touch. He was watching the live scoring, uh, so now he's been texting me all week and, and it's nice to have someone like Paul, uh, you know, looking out for my scores and looking out for me and the support that he's given me and, you know, quite a lot of the lads in the North East is just phenomenal. And speaking of the North East, what chances now of seeing Law in the Walker Cup at Royal Aberdeen this year? Obviously it's somewhere I'd love to play. It's an event that any amateur wants to play and um, you know I'm, I'm back in the mix now I suppose after winning this week. Uh, we have a big week next week in Sweden and then the home internationals. So that's two, two big weeks and if I can show that I'm on form, play well next week and play well the week after then you never know.